Good day and welcome to another episode here from JustLovingPeople.com South Korea. My name is Lawrence and... Michelle. Yes, and we're talking to you from the very center of Seoul, South Korea. Now, it is awesome how we arrived here last night. I had this random thought yes. to take you out yes. to a hotel. It was really random. <laughs> it was just in the moment. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was just like... Let's go for a ride and the next moment uh, we were on our way to Seoul and we booked online and we chose this hotel course, called Hotel President. Yes. I had no idea where it is. Yes. It was random. Yes. Well, not random as we've just discovered this morning. For us it was random. Yeah, for us it was random but for God it was well planned because we are standing in front of Seoul City Hall at this the very center of Korea, this garden that we're standing on, this park, I would say, full of doves and people walking around, yes. a huge stage there. And I saw some protests and stuff going on around here. So this is definitely the you center of You can say it's Seoul. protest. You don't know if it's a protest. Yeah, well, we are you not You just sure. saw a bunch of people with the same jackets. It might have been just a field trip, yes. as they call it. Well, maybe you're right. But anyways, we're standing in the rain under, a, uh, under an umbrella and you can hear the city noises. And our very first week of broadcast coming here from Center Seoul um, is just amazing. And this wasn't random, it was God's plan, I believe. But it's always awesome <laughs> to see how the Lord surprises you. You yes. know, we prayed and said, God, where must we go? And we chose this random hotel on a website. And we end up at this special place. For me, it's very profound to start the broadcasting right from here. Now, this broadcast, today we're going to talk about Korean stories and stuff that happened around here. And so I want to start with my history. I've been here eight years. And um, so for the past five years, I've been living in a mud house. We call it Hanok Jeep in Korea. It's a... It is a South Korean traditional house made of mud. And, and it was a small city called Sangju. And how do you share the love? Yesterday we talked about sharing the love. And how do you share Jesus? You know, these people don't speak English. I don't speak Korean so well. But I want to tell this story of, of, of this friend I had. I really loved to join him, you know, he had remote control airplanes, and I love remote control airplanes. I know. And, you know, so we met 4 p.m. almost every day as he flew his airplane. And um, I started to share the gospel, you know, with him about Jesus. And he just looked at me and said, listen, I don't believe in anything. I don't believe in God. I don't believe, you know, I just believe in nothing. And the more I talked about Jesus, you know, the more he closed. So then, well, I just loved him, you know, I've just been his friend for months and we went for many dinners. And then one day he looked at me and said, oh no, actually he did not look at me, he looked at one of my photos on yes. my phone after I did a long bike trip. You know, I do these long bike trips, like 500 kilometer trips through the whole of Korea. Anyways, he said, the more weight you lose, the more you look like Jesus. Oh, what do you think he meant by that? <laughs> For me, it was well. I don't know what he meant. I think, I think I need to lose weight. <laughs> but that was his words. The more weight you lose, the more you look like Jesus. And I was like, wow, you know. So actually, Jesus showed him Jesus through me. The more weight yes. I lose. Yes. And um, and then for six months after that, every time we met in public, he would repeat that. Man, the more weight you lose, the more you look like Jesus. And for me, it was just awesome how God was sharing Jesus through my weight loss or <laughs> whatever. Now, I think it is just like the Holy Spirit convinced people. Oh, yes. And I spoke and that didn't work. Or yes. it did. But the Holy Spirit was, was working on him. Absolutely. You know, and so yeah, this, is, this is a story. The other one I also love to tell is this old Korean grandma you know um, she couldn't speak a word of Korean and I 
I uh, sorry English and I couldn't speak Korean and she had this um, store where they where she sold kebab and Korean street food it's called tapoki it's it it is rice you know a rice kind of thing and it's so spicy it's super spicy and then every time I went to her restaurant when I wanted to pay she just said no because you know I was one of the church members you know that we attended and she would not let me pay so I literally had to hide money in the tissue box or under the table or under the chair to get her paid <laughs> so every time or every second time or you know as much as uh, she allowed me I would just hide the money in the tissue boxes and as I drove by I said how many uh, manan isayo that means grandma there is hundred ten dollars you know back there go and look for it yes. and she would then always come running and shout ah, something in Korean she would literally throw the money on the sidewalk and turn around and I just like well Bye bye. And then she goes back and pick up the money. And so the next day, I felt like you know really blessing her. The next time, so I gave a huge amount. Man, was she angry? You know, the next time we met, she literally um, gave me you know a slap on the back, and she was angry. But this is the Korean people. They are they are so kind. You know, they are so loving. Oh, I love Korean people. Do you have any stories? Yes, I have a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them, one of my favorites, I have to say, was when we visited Dijon Market. Oh, yes. But we walked through the bus terminal area. And so the first group of people we met were these elderly people and they were just sitting there looking sluggish and tired and so even as we approached them one of the elderly ladies jumped up with her arms stretched open and said Sarangam nida, Sarangam nida, which means, means I love you I love you I love you and she came running to me sure. you know and I knew she saw God yeah and so I just ran towards her and I just grabbed her and I just held her close and I just sang back, you know, I love you, I love you. And she just smiled and she didn't let my hand go. And then we prayed for her. She had this dislocated back shoulder plate, yes. which was, you could feel the bones just scratching on each other. And so we prayed for her and her face lit up. And you can actually see it on the video. Yes. How her face lit up and she was just like, oh, thank you, thank you, you know, and it was healed, you know, she could move her arm. And then I just felt in my spirit and we actually felt together as a unit that we need to give them something, you know, and so... I said, wait, I'm going, you stay with them because you can speak a little bit more Korean than I do. Yes. And so just talk to them, ask them who they are, what their stories are, and I'll be back just now. So I went into the center and I got food for them all because I just felt like they need food. And so I got the best there was on the menu. I didn't look for anything else except for what is the best you have. And so I just picked the best to have and I got out of there and as I got closer to you, you just said, Pali, Pali, which means hurry up, hurry up. And I just walked like speed walking and when I got there and I started giving each one just a little something to eat and this one lady said something and on the video all I can hear is I've been waiting for I've you. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and so that afterwards when I saw it again because when I heard it I thought did I hear right? <laughs> yeah. And then I saw the video and it's like yeah I heard it right you know. I've been and, waiting for you. <laughs> and so then I knew that they 
up talking to God. They wow. have been waiting for God, wow. you know. They have been waiting for his visit. And so that's where it comes in. Oh, it start pouring it's now. Pouring. <laughs> <laughs> this umbrella is just like tuk, 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 this huge drops fall you down. You can hear the drops, I'm sure and about so, that. We need to hurry up. And it comes from the side, so we are all wet. And, but it's so exciting sharing this with you and just standing Is as we experience rain? it and sharing it live with you. Yeah, it's awesome. And so then I knew exactly again, over and over again, God just make it so clear to me. It's through your walk that yes. people see your faith. Sure. Sure. Not through your talk. Through your walk, people see your faith. Mm. If people don't know God, they watch you. Mm. And they can see God. They know if you're pretending mm. and if you're a true vessel for God. They can see it. And those elderly people, each one of them, they had a touch of God Definitely. and they have been waiting to see God for <laughs> so long for <laughs> and then as we went through the market and I just started hugging everyone the presence of God was yeah. just so undeniably clear and everybody on the video especially you can see it how their faces change it changed you can and see it you can feel it there are so many stories I can share and the other one recently was when we visited a small town called Gongju. Yes. And as we approached the town and we just drove, we had no plan whatsoever. We were just in a mood for a road trip. So as we entered this little town, we saw this small truck, a farmer selling his watermelons. Yes. And so we were just like we want watermelons and we just stopped you know it's random we never did it before no. we stopped we got out we asked him how much it is and it's just like yeah can we please have two and he's like two I'm like yes and so we smiled and he packed it with a smile but after he gave us like a whole bunch of testers <laughs> to know that this is good watermelon you know so he gave us lunch actually and so we got the watermelons but as he packed the watermelons and you took it to the car, I saw an elderly lady pushing her little trolley. And I knew I had to give her a hug, but she was quite far from me. And I was like, God, give me the opportunity to hug her because I could see that it has been a while since somebody even gave her a smile. And so as I paid for the watermelons and I turned around she was standing next to me and I knew that was God sure. and I was just like I didn't even think I was like I want her to have a watermelon and I gave the gentleman the money yeah. and he explained to her in Korean because she didn't understand English so he explained to her in Korean that I just bought a watermelon for her and she was like what you know she was so stunned she didn't know what to do with it <laughs> and so as he gave her the watermelon I said I want a picture and I took a picture of them and I hugged her yes, and she smiled and she didn't know what to do because even the smile felt funny to her because I could see she can't remember the last time she had a smile mm. and then the guy, as he greeted you, he's like, are you missionaries? Are you missionaries? <laughs> I remember and that. Clearly. it just stood out. Yeah. God stood out from the yeah. actions. Oh, now it's pouring. Oh, it's, <laughs> it is pouring right now. Our time is over. Well, the video she's been talking about is yes. called the movie JustLovingPeople.com. I was lucky or blessed to have my camera camera Absolutely. with me most of the time we yes. captured these moments for you go to justlovingpeople.com watch the movie you can download all the episodes for a donation of any amount say so from me lawrence and michelle from south korea goodbye god bless, god bless.